so we are moving with the 7.3 of 7th chapter so extending the reach of the invisible hand allocation of resources across industries so here mainly an example is given so with the help of graph we can move on with that okay so here the paper delivery business faces a market price of 25 per ton 25 dollar per ton so this is the market price average total costs are well below 25 dollar okay so they are making an economic profit right they are generating an economic profit if you if someone see that mm -hmm, there is an economic profit in a business there will be more and more entry into that industry because it is a perfectly competitive market free entry and free exit we studied that detail in last classes so i'm not explaining it anymore i mean again and again never so here as this particular business is generating economic profit free entry occurs okay so what happens with this free entry we see the market prices here and this So this portion of profit happens and when there is free entry what happens yes see so below I mean about 10 anything will make more economic profit about 10 anything will make economic profit so this is the market price so this so here the demand is the demand is not changing just uh, first we know the supply was here the market price was here so yeah okay now because of this uh, economic profit more firms entry enter here enter in this business so the supply curve shifts as the free entry increases supply curve shifts to s2 thus the price decreases to over to 12 Below 12, it won't go because the economic profit will be less than. We studied, no, the free entry will continue till the point where it is, where the last entrant drive the market price to minimal of the ATC. So, till 12 only, the free entry happens here. When the market price is 12, till that point only, the free entry happens here. So, next... Here you can see the minimal of the ATC somewhat here itself. So yeah, <coughs> free entry is done with the. Here in this equilibrium, at the minimum of the ATC curve, price is equal to market cost, uh, marginal cost is equal to average total cost. And at this point, zero economic profit. So no reasons for other firms to enter. Okay, next. Next, we discuss the case of truck drivers. So, so this is about exit, free exit, okay. At the, uh, the trucking market faces a market price of $10 per ton of corn delivered. At this price, average total costs are higher, generating economic losses. You see here what the market price is 10 market price is 10 but actually it is supposed to be 12 this is where this things intersect so it is supposed to be 12 but the market price is 10 only so definitely it is generating economic losses so truckers will exit this industry and then what happens as the truckers exit the industry supply curve shift to s2 so as the uh, so this is the demand curve <coughs> okay first the demand curve is this supply curve is this as the truckers exit as they are not able to cover up the uh, cost of production they will exit so now it is the new supply curve is s2 and the demand new demand curve i mean the new point where the demand curve intersect is at this point because we studied when the supply decrease Demand increase as well as price also increase. So the price now is at 12. 
as the firms exit reducing the supply until the point where the where there are zero economic losses so this is the point where there is zero economic loss that is p uh, is equal to mc equal to atc you see that here p equal to mc equal to atc okay so actually what happens here is that <coughs> In a perfectly competitive market equilibrium, production occurs at the point of minimum ATC because resources leave those industries in which price cannot cover their cost of production and enter those industries where price can cover their cost of production. Total value of production is maximized in equilibrium. Market price is acting as an incentive, incentive for sellers to promote the greatest good for society. So, uh, so moving the scarce resources to their highest possible use, but they are not actually meaning to move that scarce resources to their highest possible use. They are just acting uh, in order to attempt to maximize their own profit. Okay. So, next is seven point four. That is how, so in 7.3 we discussed that how free entry and free exit in perfectly competitive market contributes to moving the scarce resources to their highest possible use and how this is contributing to the equilibrium and how this is contributing to this MR equal to MC equal to P or ATC and those things okay. So in 7.4 we are discussing another example of hurricane like how this hurricane affects the one minute so hurricane when there is a hurricane warning uh, bottled water rice uh, i mean food items bags of ice generators uh, in case of power outages all will be having increased demand that is their demand curve will shift rightwards thus their price will be increased let's see here so first the supply supply is like this demand is like this okay with the hurricane okay with the hurricane what happens there will be more demand for bottles of water right because no, it is a disaster. We don't know how much more availability of water will be there thereafter. So, there will be more demand for water and everything. Thus, as the demand shifts from uh, here to D2, the point of intersection shifts from here to here. Thus, there is an, let's see, uh, there is an increase in the price. Okay, and... As the supply increases, the price also increases. Okay. I mean, as the demand shifts rightwards, supply has to be more now. Thus, the price also increases. So, the new equilibrium is achieved at this point. Okay. This point. <coughs> Again. Is it moral? Or is it ethical to increase the prices of necessities like food items, medicine and all at the time of a natural calamity or at the time of a disaster? It is more like an exploitation from the, uh, when we look it in the, from the perspective of government, it is more like an exploitation by the private uh, folks to the people. Okay. So, what they will do? The government will do the price control so price control is a government restriction on the price of a good and service so during this natural calamity uh, or this disaster government will not allow the uh, suppliers producers to increase their price because people are now unemployed mainly in the or they won't be having much savings or because of some of the uh, diseases or health issues during this problems they might have lost much of their savings so they are in need of help at this point of time so uh, government will not be increasing a price increase for the necessities right so they will be 
imposing a price control there is a government restriction on the price of a good or service so if the price is to be uh, hold at the old equilibrium price that is at p1 we know the demand have shifted now demand have shifted from this uh, to this but the price is still watch the old uh, price which is supposed to be here but the price is just kept here only p1 only then what happens from this point to this point will be not supplied if the price is hold here the supply will be also hold here uh, because the suppliers are having no extra incentive to meet their increased demand of bottled water so that will create a shortage because there is more demand but no supply for this portion for this portion there is demand but no supply <coughs> okay so that creates a shortage Okay, so we do not have that. There was another, uh, what to say, a graph of this dead weight loss. I'm just checking for that. God, we'll have that graph. I mean, we'll sorry, we'll that we'll have that graph gone. There is a graph for this dead weight loss. fine i will draw it here that is uh, i'm not able to see that so i will draw the <coughs> debt weight loss here so as we say we know the um, uh, so next concept is about debt weight loss okay so before that uh, we have now we have discussed the concept of shortage and here the other so in the government's perspective i said you no know, the people are unemployed they have less sa saving because of health issues or any medical issues now because of this natural calamities so mm -hmm. the government sees it as unethical like increasing the prices of necessities is, are seen as unethical so they will put a price imposition but in the other's perspective it is said that when the price control is imposed the market is no longer free to operate efficiently in cases like this people typically form long lines to purchase the water this is not only frustrating but also inefficient our time is valuable and the water does not always go to those who value it the most okay so that is what uh, the author has to say okay so next we are moving to dead weight loss so dead weight loss is the decrease in social surplus from a market distortion so we discussed here this price impo uh, what to say price control let's say um this is the demand curve <coughs> this is the supply curve we studied what is social surplus right we studied what is social surplus so as the uh, demand increase okay let me color it a and b okay and this is the price so this is the surplus b is the producer surplus so this is the market price but this is the where the reservation value or the marginal cost appears to be so the area between market price and the uh, mc is the producer surplus that means the supplier can sell has products above the marginal cost to this point uh, because this is the market price again a is the consumer surplus that means the consumer is willing to uh, so this point is where the consumer is willing to buy even if the market price we discussed the example of iphones the iphone was ha ha is having a 40 dollar market price whereas there is madeline who is ready to buy this iphone for 70 dollar so 70 minus 40 30 dollar consumer surplus is there like that the region between the willingness to buy 
that is the reservation value of the uh, consumers and the market price is the consumer surplus okay and together a plus b is the social surplus but when there is a restriction on on watch um, on the price let's say um, <coughs> if there is a price control price is restricted to be below the equilibrium price um, there will be a dead weight loss that is this is the equilibrium price and the price has to be here i'll take another color okay the price has to be here okay that means so this is the uh, price control okay the price has to be below the equilibrium price that means this portion right this portion of triangle okay yeah so this portion is the dead weight loss because the social surplus is not attained there because of this price control the social surplus is not attained there now the consumer surplus is what um okay the uh, new numbers i will be giving as z and y now z and uh not y yeah y are the new um surplus okay so the social surplus has decreased by the amount of dead weight loss because of the price control okay so this is what price control means that is this is the supply this is uh, this is the demand this is the supply and the market price has to be here because this is where it intersects but it is set at the price control is imposed below the market price so it is it is have to be here this this part is the dead weight loss okay okay so next <coughs> so next uh, are some uh, theories pure theories that you can read it by yourselves so first is command economy an example is north korea so it is an organized by a centralized government that owns most um, if not all businesses and government officials direct the factors of production um official deter officials determine when were how much is produced because the market and supply demand do not determine prices prices are set by government so ludwig von mises an austrian economist argued that the command economies were untenable and doomed to fail because no rational prices would emerge without competition and private ownership of means of production okay Soviet Union firstly was a command economy. Okay. Then you have, uh, and also GDP. So some exam, some definitions are here as well. You may note them down. GDP is the um, uh, gross domestic product is the market value of final goods and uh, services produced in a given uh, in a country in a given period of time. Okay. Next you have. central uh, planner or let's say uh, market economy so businesses are privately owned their decisions are uh, so central planner is something different okay it is uh, what to say centrally planned things are centrally planned um next so now we are going to discuss the market economy south korea is an example so businesses are privately owned and their decisions are based on profit motive uh, prices are set by supply and demand consumers preferences resource scarcity determine which goods are produced in what quantity the 
18th century economist Adam Smith in his book The Wealth of Nations compares market activities to an invisible hand that distributes resources to the public. Most nations do not operate as purely command or market economy but include aspects of both. US is a market economy switched to a planned economy to mobilize during World War II. Uh, so the measures like subsidy, welfare and everything. Okay. Next, uh, when the interest of economic agents coincide, a coordination problem of bringing the agents together to trade arises. When the optimizing actions of two economic agents are not aligned, these agents face an incentive problem. So in market economics, uh, market economies, prices, not central planners, incentivize producers. And the bottom line of profit is what determines success of success for entrepreneurs. Planned economy means the government. Centrally, there is a planning. It's not the market condition, but a central planning happens. There. So the rewards are based on meeting quantity targets. Um, the plant managers are an example for that. And also, uh, comparing North Korea and South Korea, South Korea made a little more, I mean, oh, where is that? Yeah. So, South Korea in terms of GDP became much more better than North Korea. So, yeah, the market economy excels in the world. In this, uh, what to say, command economy have failed in most of the reasons. I mean, most of the cases. <coughs> <coughs> Next, equity and efficiency. Equity is concerned with the distribution of resources across society. Competitive market equilibrium maximizes social surplus and is efficient uh, does not mean that resulting distribution is morally satisfactory. In a perfectly competitive equilibrium, Pareto efficiency holds. Not possible to make a staring child better off without making someone else worse off. So that is through taxation, right? Uh, from the rich, much more amount is, there are prob problems with the tax system of our country. But again, uh, we, uh, much part of our salary or the profit of, we say, of businessmen are taken uh, through the ways of tax for helping the poor people. So, there happens this part of efficiency thing. Okay, so with that, this chapter is also done. And there are two... Uh, terminologies in this chapter that we need to get familiarized. So one is double oral auction. It is a market where sellers orally state ask and uh, buyers orally state offers. Okay, oral, double oral auction. Okay, double oral auction. Double sense that uh, sellers orally ask and buyers orally offers. Then bilateral negotiation is the second term. So, as we say, a bilateral trade agreement between India and China, like that, don't, don't. that means it is a market mechanism in which a single seller and a single buyer privately negotiate with bids and us. So, yeah, with that, our seventh chapter has also come to an end. In next class, we'll start with our eighth chapter. So, by then, uh, happy learning. <laughs>